All right, welcome back to another Pioneer 700 video. Today's video, I'm gonna be installing a stereo system in my 2019 Pioneer 700. If you watched any of my previous videos, I installed the switch panel and a sub-electrical system to power accessories. All right, so these are the accessories I'm gonna be installing in this video. These are gonna be my rear speakers. They're a set of four inch Boss uh, marine grade uh, speaker cans that'll be mounted on the roll bar behind you. This is a, just an accessory to put in the glove box so you can plug in your phone, uh, either the line in or USB source. You can also plug a thumb drive in to play streaming or MP3 music. This is the actual system we're going to be installing right here. This is the Boss MGR 450B. This is an updated version of the 350, which is the round one. I've used it multiple times in the past. Uh, it's a very good system. Uh, it works very well. The one complaint Boss got was in some people's setups, the display would fog up. So they released this newer version. It's also a square instead of a circle, which may actually look better uh, with the setup that we have here. So this is the first time I've installed this unit. Just like the old ones, it uses a three inch circle to mount in. I've also got this set of four inch speakers for the front, and these will be mounted uh, in the kick panel area in the front. So we'll have a four speaker sound system. All right, the last accessory I have is the, this is the AM FM antenna for the stereo system. I've never used one like this before. It's meant to be attached to glass. The antenna has a sticky surface on it and it either goes on glass or plastic and then plugs in. So we're gonna try it out and see how it works. It had pretty good reviews. I'm curious to see how it'll work. It's always a challenge to find an antenna solution that works good for a UTV. All right, so if I open this MGR 450, see that here's our head unit here see what it looks like on the back so it needs a three inch hole and then it can actually be mounted through the front with screws which is nice previously you had to attach the bracket on the back that is optional now it comes with a couple different trim rings for different sizes and the part that I really like is it has this rubber cover that you can put over the screen when you're not using it. And this would be good if you were spraying out the inside of your machine. Even though this is IP6 rated, I would still throw this on it real quick if you're using a power washer just to help keep out the weather. So that's everything included in the package. If you've ever wired up a stereo, car stereo, it's the exact same thing. Uh, there's just a couple little differences. On the old Boss uh, 350, there was a yellow wire, a red wire, and a black wire for your power connection, which is just like car stereos. Your yellow wire would be connected to a constant source of power, and your red wire would be connected to uh, your ignition controlled wire. I always just wire those two together, and the radio had a memory. It would not lose the memory when you turned it off. So. They went ahead and just eliminated the yellow wire. Now there's just a red wire and a black wire, which works good. So it's a really nice thing about the boss unit over a lot of the other ones. There is no current draw on your battery when this is off. And this will be connected into my relay controlled accessory circuit. So whenever the ignition is off, the radio is off and you don't have to worry about any kind of draw on your battery. And this will retain all the stations and settings when it is turned off. All right, so the first thing we have to do, you can see with the switch panel I used, there's basically like a perfect spot for the stereo to fit right here. The only thing you have to worry about on the Pioneer 700 is behind here, there's actually a plate, a metal support that runs towards the front of the vehicle under here. And it will interfere with this part. You have to basically space this over as far to the right as it will go. And the best, the easiest way to test this out is to 
I'm gonna drill a smaller hole first and kind of see exactly where that is. That way I can see exactly how far I have to go over. All right, so I took my three inch hole saw and I just basically made a little score where I would like it to be offset just to where the side of the radio would fit flush with this part right here. And now I'm just gonna drill a hole over here and check. I need to see if that bracket is going to be in the way. I don't know if you can see the bracket in there or not. But it kind of cuts at an angle. And it looks like we may just clear where I'm at here. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this hole with the hole saw. And we're going to try it out. So it is pretty much clearing. We are just barely touching on there. I can tell because the right side is kicked up just a hair. I mean, it's not that bad. I could probably deal with it just by screwing the unit down into position. All right, so like I said, we'll, we'll make that work. Um, you really, you just gotta have it farther to the right than you think it would look right to clear that bracket. You could probably try to, you know, bend the bracket or trim it or the, the support, but it is the dash support. So I don't really think it's a good idea. That'll just cause problems later with rust and everything else. So we're gonna make it work like this. Uh, the next thing to do is it's a lot easier if you wire this outside of the hole. So bring your wires up to you, make your connections right here get everything bundled up and tightened and uh, heat shrinked and then stick this all down in there because there's a lot, there's a much more limited space in there. So we will run a wire from our fuse panel that we installed under the hood. And if you don't have the fuse panel installed, you do have your cigarette lighter connection down here. And uh, as long as that's all you were using it for, maybe a phone charger and to power your stereo, the accessory uh, port down here will provide enough power so you could just tap into it to provide power for your stereo uh, i don't really recommend doing that but it would work if that's all you're going to be installing is just a stereo in your side by side now, if you're going to be doing anything else like i am you really need to install uh, an accessory um, uh, fuse panel so i started talking about the wiring you get your power wires you get your speaker wires for your four different speakers an antenna port uh, these are auxiliary input jacks for a line input and here you have front line out rear line or subwoofer so just like any aftermarket stereo you can kind of go as crazy as you want your USB input this cable right here is new but I believe this is for remote control so you can actually get a whole nother head it looks just like this but they will communicate with each other and do the exact same thing and it won't be as deep because it doesn't have all electronics so you can actually have two heads in a side by side that's not something you'll be using but if you're putting this in a boat or an rv that would be kind of a really neat feature uh, and then that's it that's all your connections so first thing i'm going to do i'm going to start planning out how i run the speakers it's really simple the front speakers that i bought have wire on them so i'll drill a small hole mount the speaker, run the wire up, pull it through here, get everything attached, make sure it's, you, know, you have a lot of moving parts behind your dash here. You don't want getting tangled up in wires. Um, and you also, everything under here is exposed to the elements, just like on top of the dash. So you gotta remember that. And then the speakers for the rear, it's gonna be a little more tricky, but what I plan on doing is just running a wire up along the pillar here to the back. And I'll show you that as I do it. All right, so the speaker wire, I've got this four conductor cable, two for each speaker that will run down and up under the radio. 
and then I've zip tied it all along the windshield here. It just runs up and over. And then we'll come out here. And then I'm gonna have my two speakers up in here. Okay, so I've got my speakers mounted. These are these Herdio four inch speakers. I'm not real crazy about the quality on them. I mean, they're okay, but like this grill is loose. These are supposed to be waterproof. I bet you this will rust within six months, if not sooner. So we're gonna take a bet on that. We'll see. Uh, it's really simple though. Basically, drilled a couple holes in the plastic. I had these uh, nuts and bolts, put them through, attached them to the mounting bracket, drilled a little hole out the top here. The wire runs out. I'll put a little silicone around that. Just keep water from splashing up into the vehicle. And then tuck those up where they come out of the dash. Here and here. And then this is the one that runs from the back for the speakers in the back. I'm getting ready to mount these. Uh, they're pretty, they're, the holes that are on them are way too large to fit this vehicle. That's why they give you these spacers. I'm gonna mount them on the rear roll bar here and you need to take the roof off to be able to get to the bolts. And then I'll set the roof back on and make sure everything lines up. But it's really easy, you just take an Allen key, take out the two bolts and we'll bolt these up. And then there's these threaded connections, or push connections for your positive and your negative. So here's how the speakers look mounted. They give you the rubber spacers had to use all of them to make it fit the Pioneer frame here. So those are on. So I'm gonna get everything wired up now. All right, so I'm gonna try installing that antenna that I showed you. Not on the glass, but I just can't see it, but I it's double-sided tape. I just installed it right under here. And then the USB port, you just drill a one inch hole. I put it here in the glove box that way you can plug your phone in and throw it in the glove box, keep it safe from water. So now I've got everything pulled out of the dash and I'm ready to start making my connections. All right, one thing I recommend using is liquid electric tape when you're doing a project like this. And I always use the Super 33 tape because it's really good, but it doesn't really seal out moisture too well. If you put a coating in this over things, it helps keep the moisture out a lot better and helps you get into some tight areas. Works pretty good. All right, I've got it wired up and installed. Got my wires tucked out of the way. See how it looks, looks pretty good. Go ahead and turn it on, turn the power on and fire it up real quick. Make sure everything's working. Based off of what I've heard so far, these front speakers, I can't really recommend them. They're nowhere near as good as the boss speakers in the rear, but they just, I put them in here just to get a little bit more sound. Uh, to take advantage of the four speaker system, but they're really not doing much. So that worked pretty good. Next thing I'm gonna do is I screwed it in with four stainless screws. So it's in there nice and tight. And they, like I said, they give you these little frames here. Oh, there we go, got it. So that's snapped in. So it kind of finishes it off, makes it look really good. And this one works just like the 350 that I used to have. I went through and quickly programmed some uh, presets in for, for the radio. As far as bands, you've got three FM sets of presets, two AM weather band. Let's see if that even works. Lows in the lower 50s. So that works. It just depends on what your weather band is where you are. Showers. Un so yeah, and it works with the ignition. So I'm really pleased with how it turned out, how it looks. Hopefully this video helped you out. I'm just gonna tidy up the wiring into the hood a little bit now. It's not bad. I'm just gonna tuck some of this up out of the way and zip tie it off. Hopefully this helped you out. Maybe give you an idea, something to do with your Pioneer. Obviously this is a 700, the 1000 is very similar. 
If, it, if you liked it, be sure to like the video. If you have any questions that I can answer, leave a comment below. As always, I'll have links in the description below to all the products I use in this video where you can buy them. And until next time, we'll see you later.